What is up my YouTube friends? I am so excited about this video today. I get so many questions about how to connect OBS to broadcast on Zoom. And I never really understood why people would want to do this, but I kind of get it now. There are so many people in the education sphere right now that are using Zoom to broadcast to their students and everything else, and they want to be able to put together a much more dynamic broadcast. I love you guys, and I'm so glad that our educators out there are really trying to push the envelope during these kind of weird times. So I did the research, and I'm going to show you today how to connect OBS to Zoom using your Mac. And you're not going to have any problems doing it. I'm going to show you everything step by step so you can put together amazing broadcasts for all your students out there. So let's get to it. If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. For me, when adding a guest in OBS, Zoom seems to have the absolute best picture quality, and I love that about it. So using Zoom to broadcast to an audience or clients or students is a really good idea because you're going to give them the best video broadcast you possibly can. For whatever reason, Zoom doesn't seem to want people to be able to use OBS to broadcast. But that doesn't really matter to me. To me, what matters is that my audience gets the tools that they need to do the job they want to do. Hooking up OBS to work with Zoom is a little bit of a process. So just hang in there with me. I'm going to walk you through it step by step. I promise you it's going to work. You're going to be able to broadcast from OBS to Zoom to your entire audience. It's going to be fantastic. The first thing we want to do is set up OBS so we can use it as our NDI source. So let's hop in and get to work. The links to these plugins will be in the description, but I'll walk you through the setup. The first thing I do is go to this OBS software page here. It's actually part of the forum. Then I click the release page on GitHub. Then scroll down to the OS you're using, whether it's Windows or Mac OS. There are two things you need to download and make sure are installed on your computer. The NDI runtime and the actual NDI plugin. So I download the NDI runtime file. Once you download it, you go to the location, you double click it, then you click continue. After clicking continue a couple of times, you can install it. Now that I have the runtime installed, I need to download the actual plugin file. To do that, I just follow the instructions. I download the plugin file for my Mac. I double click it or on Mac, you can run into this problem where it doesn't like it because it's from the internet. So you can right click on it and click open and then open again. Then I just follow through the installation. Once it's installed, you can open OBS Studio. If you click tools at the top, you're going to see NDI output settings. That means you installed it properly. Now that you have the NDI runtime and plugin all installed for OBS, we're going to do something very similar for Zoom. First, we're gonna to go to newtech.com. The links for all of this stuff will be in the description. The first thing you wanna do is go up to NDI, select NDI tools. Then you're gonna to scroll down to the bottom. You're going to select NDI tools for Mac, click download. You have to put in a little bit of information and tell them that you're not a robot. Then you're going to go ahead and click on the download button. You want to download both of these tools, the NDI tool and the NDI driver. Once the tools are downloaded, go ahead and open up the location where you downloaded them. And the first thing we're going to do is install the new tech driver for Mac OS. You just double click on it and then you double click on the package and you continue through this install and you have to agree to the terms and install it. You're probably going to have to put in your password here. Once this is installed, we need to run the tools. So you're going to go to the New Tech NDI Tools for Mac OS. Double click on that. And you're going to see a bunch of different packages that we can run. Now the ones we need for what we're going to do is the New Tech NDI Video Monitor package and the New Tech NDI Virtual Input package. The first thing we're going to run is the Video Monitor. And you'll see why in a second and you just double click it and continue. You have to put your password in and that goes in and you click close. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back into that folder and we're gonna run the new tech NDI virtual input package and you just click continue and agree to the terms and click install and here is going to tell you 
that when the software finishes, it's going to need to restart your computer. So make sure that if you're using anything, you have it saved out because it definitely doesn't give you an option not to restart. Go ahead and continue the installation, put in your password, and once it's finished, you can see right here, you have to click the restart button. Now, like I said before, for whatever reason, Zoom doesn't want us to be able to do this. They've removed this feature from their newest software. So we're going to get around that by just using an older version of Zoom. In this case, 4.6.19178. something or other. It doesn't really matter. The link is in the description to the exact Zoom package you need. You're not going to be missing any features that you actually want, and you're going to have the feature that you actually need. So go ahead and download this Zoom package. Make sure that you go into your applications and you right click and you move to trash your original Zoom package. Whatever it was, you don't need it anymore. You want to make sure that you go ahead and delete that install first. Then you go into your download area, double click on Zoom, continue and run it and boom. It runs really quickly because most of the stuff that it actually needs is already there because you already had Zoom on there. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead into our OBS Studio. You want to go to the top of OBS Studio, click on Tools. Then you're going to select NDI Output Settings. You want to click Main Output and click OK. Now we're going to go into our applications and we're going to start the NDI Virtual Input app. You'll see a little NDI show up at the top of your screen. Click on that and then select your OBS. It's going to have your computer name and then OBS. So click on that. Next, we're going to go and we're going to open New Tech NDI Video Monitor app. In order to see your OBS, you have to go into File, go to MacBook Pro, the same thing, and then select your NDI Virtual Input. And there we go. Woohoo! We have our OBS output. The last step in the process, we're going to go into Zoom. If you go to the top right under Settings, then select Video. All you have to do is use that camera to drop down and select NDI Video. Be aware that usually Mirror My Video is checked. So if all of your lettering and everything is backwards, all you want to do is uncheck Mirror My Video and that will solve your problem. Next, we need to add our audio. If you go in here and you go to Microphone, you can drop that down and select NDI Audio. Now you may notice that your audio levels feel kind of low. So what I like to do is uncheck Automatically Adjust Microphone Volume and I like to adjust it to where I want it. The other thing that I like to do is go and adjust the output volume. Now the reason why we had the new tech NDI video monitor on is because when we put in our headphones and we play with this audio setting stuff, we are going to physically be able to hear what's going to be broadcast. So you can adjust the output level and the input level to put it to where you want it. I get a lot of people asking me why their zoom output is so low when they do things like this. And that's because they're not adjusting their output volume level. So go ahead and make sure that you do that. And as you can see, we are set to go. You just have to start a meeting. And there we go. It's connecting Zoom. Now, if you are wondering why it looks unbelievably choppy on my computer, well, that makes sense. First of all, I'm running a Mac, which should make total sense why it's kind of choppy. But the real reason why this video is exceptionally choppy on my computer is because I am doing a screen record. And anytime I do a screen record, it bogs everything down and makes it choppy. I want to absolutely assure you that I completely tested this entire method on a 2015 MacBook Pro, which is not an amazingly fantastic or powerful computer. And when I wasn't doing a screen record, this worked really, really, really well. So you're not going to have any problems if you have some somewhat newer Mac equipment. I really hope that the educators and folks out there who have been trying to broadcast OBS to Zoom find this video 
Let me know in the comments if this helped you. I'd really appreciate it. If you're looking to add a second camera to your live stream, you should check this video out right here. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.